most of my career really up until about the last year was working um, as a, a reporter and an editor at newspapers and, and in traditional media. Um, but about a year ago, I moved to New York City, um, you know, left my little, my little beach town um, in, in North Carolina and uh, went up to the big city to, to start a new effort um, for digital first media. <laughs> So just for context, Digital First Media is the um, second largest newspaper company in the United States. It actually is the management company that is over the media news group and 21st Century Media, which used to be known as uh, Journal Register Company. We have 75 dailies and more than 200 non-dailies in 15 states. It's a big company. Um, have some really big titles like the Denver Post and the San Jose Mercury News and um, the Salt Lake Tribune and the uh, uh, Pioneer Press in uh, St. Paul, but we also have a lot of really small papers um, spread out across the country. And Project Thunderdome was really designed as an effort to try to both at the same time increase the quality of non-local content across all of these properties online, but also to um, you know reduce the amount of duplication of work. So when there's a big story breaking on a site, um, you know, in one of our you know a big story breaking in the nation, whether it's the um, you know, the Navy Yard shooting or the Boston Marathon bombing, you know, let's produce that story once, let's produce it really well, and let's give it, um, you know, put it, give access to all of the, the sites across our entire network to that. So um, I started with uh, uh, a uh, with nothing, and we've, we've created a team of journalists up in New York who are, who are really working to try to um, crack that nut. Um, it's important that I say that this is still very much a work in progress, what we're doing. Um, we're still figuring it out, even just trying to find the analytics to measure what we do when it's distributed across a large network and how to make that work has been probably one of the biggest challenges that we've faced. Um, but, but it's been interesting in looking at um, you know, a lot of those technical challenges. Um, you know, how do we measure success um, in what we do? Um, you know, Business 101 pretty much tells you if you measure it, you're going to manage it, right? Um, but what's the right way to measure and manage journalism? I mean, we all look at things like page views and unique visitors and time on site, and those are really wonderful measures, and I, I, and I don't, um, you know, in any way want to say that those aren't things that we need to be plugged into pretty much all day, every day. But like every other editor that's focused on digital growth, um, you know, I've found myself looking at those metrics and then starting to employ tactics that... Um, really are all about driving those page views. Um, you know, let's put a few more photos in that gallery. Let's add, you know, let's use a few tweets to try to drive some, some traffic, um, you know, to this story. You know, let's, let's do a top ten list, um, you know, to try to see if we can get some, um, some, get some, uh, some page views. We push to curate and post the latest news from around the web, but that focus on rapidly producing content that drives clicks, I think has become a key element of success for many startups, digital startups, and it's increasingly being embraced by traditional media outlets. The focus on vanity metrics, though, has left a lot of journalists who believe that we are in the business for a greater purpose, wondering whether we're missing something. Is there a key metric that we should be looking at that we haven't yet found how to measure? Um, what well, quantity of journalism is fine and well and important, how do we measure the quality of what we do? Um, if producing qu quality public service journalism for our communities is a core mission and a core um, piece of our business, how do we measure the success to ensure that we're executing that mission? I think it's worth walking back in time a little bit to the days before web analytics were flashing across the big screen TVs on just about every newsroom in America and talk about how we used to measure the value of the journalism that we did. Um, when I was a reporter working for uh, the, uh, the Daily Tar Heel at the University of North Carolina, I remember getting on the bus um, to go to class and watching as different people picked up the Daily Tar Heel newspaper, and I would watch intently to see whether they read my story. That's all I really cared about. They could, whatever else they did, they had to read my story. Did they turn the page and read the whole thing? Did they sit to the next, point to it to the person next to them? You know, what was the reaction that they had? Or did they just gloss over it and go on to the next thing? Um, you know, if we were doing good journalism, we, you know, the phones would light up. We knew we would get letters to the editor, we would get mail, um, but we would get some sort of reaction from the people out in the community. That was one way that we knew if we'd hit, if we'd hit the mark um, with the journalism we were doing. 
Another way was if concerned citizens would show up. Um, oftentimes, I would go to city council meetings where I was the only person in the room other than the people who were actually making the decisions. But every once in a while, I would uh, you know, be able to hit on an issue and explain it in a way that people understood that the value of being a part of the civic process. And I knew that that was an indicator that I'd done a pretty good job because people were, were, felt that it was important to be engaged. Um, another way that we measured success was obviously, um, you know, we were able to see whether we um, had, were able to do, have real and significant um, changes in our communities. You know, could we uncover injustices? Did we get laws changed? Did we put bad guys in jail or at least help raise the, um, you know, find information that helped others um, see that that was a need? That was another way that we measured success. And of course there were these. Um, we were always... Uh, trying to get an award or two, because that was another measure of whether we were doing our jobs. But ultimately, our success or failure was really based on one thing, and it was our ability to influence our audience. Um, as journalists, we were trying to help them understand the community around them and influence the way that they went about living their lives. Um, and when we were successful, advertisers wanted to pay to ride on the coattails of that influence. But even then, we had to find ways to measure that success. Um, you know, simply sitting on a bus and seeing whether someone read that story was not good enough. We had to know how many people were reading those stories, or how many people were, were reading uh, our products, not necessarily those stories. Um, you know, and so methods were developed. The ABC um, uh, Audit, Audit Bureau of Circulations had uh, ways to develop metrics to see how many subscribers you had, how many single copies you had, um, you know, how many of those were at a discounted price so that we knew whether they were um, you know, really more vanity circulation. Even then, we were chasing numbers that maybe weren't always as much of as much value as the ones that, um, that mattered, like the number of subscribers and people who had been with you for a long time. Um, ratings books de detailed for broadcast companies, the way that they could reach, um, uh, how many people they reached, and uh, what kind of, how to, help, how to help them make programming decisions. And all this was really, in the end, about money. The larger the audience, the bigger the mass, the more money, um, the more influence you had, and the more money you could make. And then things changed. <laughs> in a big way. <laughs> We blew up the models that had worked for generations, and the disaggregation of the mass audience dramatically changed our business forever in, ma in ma ways that many of you know. One major change was suddenly we had a, a way to actually measure, um, measure the value of a particular story to a reader. We could tell whether they clicked on, uh, whether a reader clicked on an ad, whether they shared it on social media, whether they commented on it. And to be honest with you, initially journalists pretty much hated this. Um, they were, you know, they feared that we would, we would pander to audiences by dumbing down what we did, um, you know, to make sure that we were hitting um, popular interests. They feared that we would measure them and compare them to their, to their colleagues and, and uh, you know, make hiring and firing decisions based on who had the most clicks. They feared that we would no longer be doing the kinds of journalism that mattered. Entrepreneurial journalists... Um, discovered that there were new ways to engage audiences. They could aggregate stories from across the web. If you've ever had a site like Drudge or um, FARC carry a link to one of your stories, you know quickly what happens. Um, a story that normally would get 500 or 1,000 page views suddenly blows up and is getting tens of thousands and potentially hundreds of thousands of page views. Sometimes it crashes your site. Um, and that's great. You know, as a journalist, I remember the first time that happened. Um, you know, the folks in my news were really excited. Look at this. Our numbers are going off the chart. We're so excited. Until all of a sudden we thought, but what do we get for that? Um, what does that really mean to us to all of a sudden have this great spike, other than the fact that we were trying to figure out how to keep our servers running? That was definitely one thing it meant. Really, in the end, it meant little more than a little bit of remnant advertising revenue um, that was going, that people weren't, people who were not, who did not really care about the companies that were advertising on our sites were suddenly flooding into our site. They weren't clicking on those ads. They didn't really see the value of that influence in our community. And that, you know, really felt like all of a sudden we were, we were chasing the wrong thing. Other news sites were um, using analytics in a really neat ways to try to figure out what people would click on, and, and they tried to create more and more of it. Sites like Yahoo developed algorithms that not only targeted content to specific readers, but it gave editors predictive data 
to tell how to play specific stories to get the most traffic. Um, they focused, and these sites focused more and more on things like photo galleries and lists and memes and social promotion and yes, cats and dogs. Um, you can never go wrong with a good cat, a good cat story or a video. Um, but it wasn't just these startups. Traditional news organizations have all def have definitely joined in. Um, many dedicate teams of people to social promotion and creating galleries and doing aggregation and curation and listicles. And I really want to be clear about this. I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, you know, I think that it's great that journalists are responding to their audience and to the changing ways that people consume information. The team I lead focuses a lot on trying to find out what people are talking about and how to relate information to them in ways that, that are going to help them consume that. Um, but it also raises a question. Um, is our effort to simply chase page views really getting us where we need to go as an industry? Is it driving us towards a sustainable business model? Or are the analytics pushing us to dilute the impact of the journalism we produce by focusing on quantity and not on quality? Um, there are plenty of examples of situations outside of the media world where the simple act of creating met metrics um, and some of these goals have backfired. Um, how many times have you read a story about police departments under pressure to reduce crime rates in their community, manipulating data to make themselves look better? The push to hit certain numbers drives the same people who are charged with uh, enforcing the rules to sometimes break them. Now, I'm not saying that journalists are breaking the rules, um, sometimes the, but sometimes the effort to measure and create accountability leads people to focus on the wrong thing. Over the last year or so, more and more digital journalists have started asking the question, what metrics should we be focusing on? Um, most of you know that the, the key to any kind of metrics conversation is on picking the right metrics to measure. Um, how many of you have see, seen the movie Moneyball or have read the book? It's a great movie, great book. I'm not a baseball person, but you know, I learned a lot um, from, from, this, from this movie. Um, but in it, you'll remember Ma Billy Bean, who was the general manager of the Oakland A's, reframed the game of, of his, his, for his team, but of, ultimately for baseball itself, by recasting how he measured performance. When the A's acquired uh, Major, League Relief, Major League Baseball relief pitcher Chad Bradford from the White Sox, Bradford's standard pitching metrics were respectable, um, but his fastball wasn't all that fast, and the cat scouts made fun of him because they said he looked funny when he threw. Um, but the A's thought about measurement more comprehensively than other teams. Bean knew that Bradford was a steal, and he figured out which metrics were the most important to his team's long-term success, and he built his team around that. So even though he had one of the smallest salary budgets in baseball, he was able to find great success. Um, I think it's important for us to be looking at what are the right metrics, not just for journalism, but for your organization. So what works for Gawker? may not work for a local media, um, a local media outlet in, uh, in a small town. And what works for um, a brand may not work for a newspaper. Um, it's really about figuring out what it is that is, is important to you. Um, I, you know, I talk in here, the, a good metric has to be understandable. You have to understand what is the goal that you're actually trying to find. How, how is it comparative? What does it compare to? Is it comparing itself to um, you know, others in the, same, uh, in the same industry or in the same field? Are you comparing it just to your year-over-year -year statistics? But it also has to be something that you can change. Having a metric that just simply tells you what you already know doesn't do you any good. It has to be able to give you something that you can change behavior by. Um, I mentioned Gawker for a minute because I think they have, they have an intense focus on new visitors. That is their key metric. And um, by, by really focusing on what is the content that we need to produce that's going to draw in those new visitors. They've done that and they've really developed an entire editorial strategy around that. But for a local news organization, things like return visits from local loyal audiences is probably a much more important metric. So if page views themselves aren't necessarily the path to success, what is? Um, I think it's important to ask what we value. What is it exactly that we are out here trying to do? I didn't get into journalism for money. Um, I got into this because I wanted to make a difference. Um, I wanted to help people understand the world around them and to tell stories um, that mattered. I wanted to help right wrongs. But really, how do you measure that? It's kind of tough, isn't it? Um, I think it's time for news organizations to evaluate the digital metrics that help drive them toward 
the kind of long-term business success that they need. And while page views are an important part of that, they're only a small part. The key is determining which metrics are going to help them meet that larger goal. Um, so how do you do that? I actually think it's a little bit like the scientific method. You know, you have to ask a question. What is the goal? What is it that we're trying to accomplish here? Develop a hypothesis about how exactly you might measure that goal. So if quality is your goal, what are the different things that you can try to do to, to, to demonstrate quality as a you know, in, a, in, in the metrics that you have? Figure out which actions, specific actions, that your staff members can take that will drive you towards that goal. And then constantly evaluate and tweak and refine and try to, try to move forward on building upon the goal that you've set. Sometimes you pick the wrong ones, and that's okay. You can always come back and pick new ones. Um, but that's, I think that's an important piece. But in addition to measuring um, things like page views and audience, I think it's also important to focus on things like loyalty and engagement. And thankfully, new analytics tools, a lot of them you're going to hear about today and have already heard about, give us a really terrific window into that. We can look at um, things like uh, share, at social sharing and page depth and time on site. Um, we can see where people click on a page and where they don't. We can learn um, who our readers are and what interests them and what format the news uh, that they like takes and, and how they get into it. But as an industry, I also think we need to really look um, and work to find uh, something that helps us move beyond that and focus on measuring the impact of our journalism. And there's some pretty big minds working on this right now. Um, about a year ago, the Washington Post Greg Lynch posted a blog on his uh, posted a post on his blog Lynchpin about the need for ways to measure impact of our journalism. He continues to work on this effort and has been joined like uh, folks from the New York Times, Aaron, Aaron's Pilhoffer, who's created a news analytics team that's focused on measuring things that matter beyond the traditional metrics. They brought in a Knight Mozilla Open News Fellow this year, Brian Abelson, who spent 10 months helping them work to define ways to measure impact in the journalism that they do. And nonprofit news organizations are dealing with a lot of the same issues. They're working to define the impact of their work, um, since that's often the method that they need to use to get foundations to fund them. I don't think anybody's really cracked this nut yet, but I think it's a worthwhile effort and one we need to get more people involved in. All right, again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be measuring page views or doing the kind of work that we know satisfies um, you know, a need for our audience, but we need to be focusing on stories that have the greatest impact for our community as well, or, or, or the ones that are gonna help you build, uh, a, build your brand to make it influential with your audience. Long term, these goals have to be larger. Uh, long term, these goals should have a larger influence on our success than the quick spike in traffic from a cute cra from a cute cat video. Um, at Gawker, which I mentioned earlier, they did an experiment in 2012. They had, at the time, had an editorial philosophy where each one of their um, staff members was pro posting anywhere from five to ten stories a day. Often the kind of typical link baiting um, stories that you that you've seen um, or that I showed earlier. Um, and they said, you know what, we're going to try something a little bit different here. Yes, we still want to bring in people, but we also want to make sure that we, ha we develop a loyal audience. So they assigned one person a day to what they called page view whoring. Um, uh, that one person was producing 12 to 15 items a day, and they were exactly what you would think that they were. They were the Britney Spears, um, you know, video. They were the, you know, whatever the outrage of the day. It was the cute cat um, listicle. It was all the stuff that... Um, that they knew was, was going to pull people in. But then they took the rest of their writers and they said, we want you to do more substantive journalism. And when they analyzed the effort, um, you know, on the one hand, all of us would hope that the substantive journalism got tremendous page views, right? Well, actually, they found out it was about even. So the 15 posts that the page view whore did that day um, probably each got about the same number of views as the more substantive stuff. But what they found is that people were coming back more and more. They were building loyalty as well as bringing in new people. So they were building a strategy that helped them, perform, helped them do both things. Um, they decided that the link bait would draw new people in and that their other uh, efforts would inspire loyalty. Um, I really think it's that focus on balance, the balance between the quick, hit, um, the quick hit efforts and the more substantive journalism that helps to inspire the loyalty um, for, audience, for most audiences. Every side has different goals, but in most cases, finding that balance is what's going to help us um, with success. At Thunderdome, um, one of the ways that we are helping, we are trying to seek that balance is by looking at 
the, the formats that people like to consume information in, whether it's in a listicle or a Q&A, and taking important stories and trying to retrofit them into those story formats, making them more visual, making them interactive. You know, a, a listicle about the potential effects of the government shutdown may not be as interesting as the cute cat video, but, but you'd be surprised at how many people will click on it because they do want to know that information as well. An interactive that helps you understand a complex issue um, is, is oftentimes a lot more um, effective than uh, a, you know, an 80-inch story that simply tells you information that you probably can get from 100 different places. And we're playing with games, because games are another way to really engage people and help them have fun um, at the same time as learning. Um, so I don't really claim to have, be an expert or to have some magic formula um, to any of this, but I do believe that, um, that it's worth trying to figure out how to um, reach for quality, but also an, an impact in all that we do and not just simply chase page views. Thanks. <laughs>